Okay, and we'll talk, we'll talk about that. There is, um, uh, one of the definitions is what's, what are the symptoms of something versus what are the underlying causes of diseases. And if you really want to truly resolve an illness and you want it to be resolved long term, you want to find the underlying causes of the disease and not treat the symptoms. Now, you might treat the symptoms to just be more comfortable for a while, but ultimately you really need to treat the underlying cause. And let's go over what those, what, what, what's, what's the difference. If you have a headache, okay, and you take a pain medication for a headache, that's treating the underlying, uh, I'm sorry, that's treating the symptom, okay? Whereas if you find out what's causing your headache, it might be a structural imbalance, it might be any number of things, then what happens is um, if you treat the underlying cause, you'll remove it, it will remove the, the headache and it will keep it away if you're resolving the underlying cause, okay? So to find out the underlying cause, that's what I like to do with patients, is find the underlying cause, not wait until it's something that we have to suppress a symptom, okay? Now, we do some symptom suppression, but mostly it's under, what's the underlying cause? So there are eight underlying causes to all health problems, okay? First is that of toxins. We're exposed to many, many toxins, whether it's non-organic foods, whether it's medicines that are taking. One of the big toxins that we have in life is if you're constipated and you're not eliminating at least twice a day, then you have a lot of toxins in your body and they're getting into your system, okay? So one of the things in toxicity is to constantly be eliminating those toxins which you inevitably will be um, um, exposed to. It's important to not only eliminate them but try to minimize them. So if you can find out in your life, in your comings and goings, what are the sources of toxicity, whether it's foods you're eating, whether it's something you're putting on your skin, whatever it is, then that's good. I, I just read the other day, uh, and, and I don't want to offend anybody here, but I just read the other day, whether it's true or not, is that many of the hair dyes can result in cancer. So whatever, whatever that is. Um, so we have a lot of sources of toxicity in our lives. So try to minimize what you're exposed to. And you can Google and find out the many, you know, many places where there are toxicity and to be able to minimize those and to be able to up your detoxification in your body. Now, question I throw out, what organs, what systems help us eliminate toxicity in our, in our bodies? Liver is very important, and kidney, uh huh, and our skin is one of them, and breathing out. But the skin and the and the um, breathing out is not. Yes. Yeah, reproductive system, then we Yes, yes. I'm going to give you a very important thing uh, about that too. Um, Yes, yes, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit more about that particular thing. But it's important to make sure those systems, the liv your liver is able to detoxify well, the kidneys, you're drinking a lot of water, those kind of things are very important. What I just learned about um, a couple years ago and that I am now doing is that men and postmenopausal women who are not menstruating, are building up iron in the body, okay? Iron is not very healthy in the body, okay? Now, there's some people who are iron deficient anemia. These are not the people we're talking about, but people who build up iron, it's really not that healthy. And so what I'm now doing is I'm going and getting about every two or three months, I'm getting, uh, I'm donating blood. Now, they like my blood because it's O positive, but but it, it's also serving me to get rid of my iron. Okay, yes? What if you can't donate blood because you're a 
Well, there's that, then you have to um, de actively detoxify, detoxify iron. Like, and how would you do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Um, there are certain things that take that bind to iron and other heavy metals and get them out of the body. Okay? Right. Now, even though you can't donate blood, there are places you can find that you can give blood, just do a venipuncture, that they, that they don't use. Okay. They don't use the blood. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So toxicity is a very big source. Well, you can start to see uh, pigments in the skin. You can start to what it does is it interferes with respiration. Um, just overall toxicity is something that builds up in different organs. Okay, and it it, it interferes with uh, circulation to the brain. Okay. Um, infections. I uh, won't talk too much about infections other than to say that we're exposed to um, uh, uh, microbes, whether they're viruses or bacteria or funguses or parasites, all the time, and we need to be taking care of that. What my Zyto evaluations do is they pick these things up. A couple things about infections. We need to Im improve our immune system, and 70% of our immune system is around the gut. Okay, so if your gut is not working right, your GI system is not working right, your immune system is compromised, okay? And one of the other things is that if you're a snorer and you're not getting as much oxygen in your system, what happens is the bad ba bacteria, I'm sorry, the good bacteria start to evolve to become bad bacteria, okay? And lack of oxygen is also a... Um, an underlying cause of development of cancer, okay? Cancer and infections if you're not getting enough oxygen in your system, okay? How do you increase your level of oxygen? Um, I wonder, my, 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 let me see. Well, I'm sorry, what was it? How do you increase your level of oxygen? What are some of the things that you well, we have um, certainly a lot of deep breathing and exercise is a very good thing like that. But, but hey there. But um, one of the things is if you are a snorer, or the resultant part of that is sleep apnea, is that you really need to stop that. You need to get something that uh, eliminates the, you know, the, the snoring, the sleep apnea. If you wake up in the morning or you're constantly up and down and you're um, fatigued in the morning, you probably are not getting good restful recovery sleep, okay? So that's very important to um, stop the snoring, okay? It's not just a social problem. It really is a health problem because, as I said, lower oxygen increases your chance of cancer and it increases infections from coming out. It, your, your immune system is not as strong. As I say, the number one most important nutrient in your life is oxygen, okay? You don't live very long without oxygen. Okay, um, nutrient imbalances or deficiencies. This isn't just what you're eating, it's what you're eating and digesting and absorbing into your system, okay? So you could be eating all the right things and if you're not digesting it, that's a problem. Now, one of the things that I recommend to almost everybody over 40 is, and I think most of us here qualify on that one, is that to be take a digestive enzyme. Okay, the reason being because as we age, we lose the ability to produce hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. So if you're not digesting, you're not absorbing the nutrients, and you're getting constipated because you're not eliminating right, and there's just a huge amount of problems that come from inability to digest your food. So you could be eating all the right things, and if you're not digesting it, then in fact, that's a problem, okay? So I, I and, and people say, well, do I have to take something the rest of my life? Yes. If you're over 40, you need to be taking di digestive enzymes for the rest of your life. I do on a regular basis with every meal. So um, that's an important thing as far as digestion, nutrient imbalance, and deficiencies. Um, 
hormone imbalances, hormone, um, uh, hormone uh, well, imbalances. Um, here's a very important thing to, to understand with hormone balances. First of all, I do recommend appropriately um, uh, hormone supplementation, but you should be doing other things first to make sure because here's how you can get hormone imbalances. There is, this is how the body makes hormones, okay? You've got cholesterol, and cholesterol-lowering drugs are the most sold, the biggest profit for drug companies, okay? Inappropriately. Now, every once in a while, somebody needs a cholesterol-lowering drug, but it's way overused, okay? Cholesterol makes a product called, the body uses it to make pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is the precursor to the stress hormone, which is cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, all the different hormones, okay? Now, if you're under a huge amount of stress, what happens is that pregnenolone goes to making cortisol, 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 cortisol to deal with stress. And what happens to all those other hormones? They're compromised, they become very imbalanced. So I don't have enough progesterone or estrogen or testosterone or whatever because all of that pregnenolone is going to make cortisol. So one of the ways to deal with that is not only give pregnenolone, but also reduce the stress in your life, okay? Stress and anxiety and so forth, you can deal with it in many ways. You can deal with it. Uh, personally, I exercise. That helps me deal with stress. But um, you can do um, meditation. I, I've heard so many things about meditation. I've done it a little bit, and it helps dramatically. But um, meditation, yoga, whatever reduces your stress level. Go see a comedy or something like that. Okay, but reducing stress level is very important. Now, here is a very important little thing. This is a take home. One of the most difficult things to deal with stress-wise in your life is bad relationships. Okay, whether they're significant others, whether they're family members or work co-workers or whatever, you all probably have dealt with people who are not good for you, okay, who are very unhealthy in your life. Uh, someone said to me, well, at the end of the year, figure out all your relationships that you have and get rid of the worst two or three of them and add two or three more good ones, okay, because they can be very, very stressful in your life, and we've all dealt with those, okay. So, very important to do that, to decrease the stress in your life to balance the hormones. The other thing is, who meant, did you mention liver? Y yes, okay. This is very important. When the liver isn't functioning right, liver is supposed to detoxify, okay? Now, what happens is, when the liver's not detoxifying well, one of the important things that liver should be detoxifying is used up hormones, okay? Estrogen, once it's done its thing, or testosterone, once it's done its thing, it gets used up. And if the liver isn't removing those used up hormones, they keep circulating throughout the body. One, they cause great amounts of inflammation, translated pain, but they also skew the body's ability to analyze what hormones you have, what balance in your body the hormones that you have and so it, 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 the now hormone levels become so skewed that you don't know. You might be you know, deficient in testosterone, or you might be deficient in thyroid or whatever, okay? So being able to have a healthy liver is going to give you hormone balance too, okay? Um, genetic uh, makeup. This is where everybody's a little different unless you have an identical twin running around. Um, but everybody's a little different. And now we have the ability to evaluate genetically by a simple cheek swab. It's inexpensive to do it, it's well worth it. You only have to get the gene evaluation once in your life, okay? Now, does anyone know the difference between genotype and phenotype? You know, because you had the answer yesterday. What's the difference between genotype and phenotype? Genotype is what your genes have in store for you okay? And you really can't change that. 
What you can change is the phenotype, and that's the expression of these genes. One of the nice things about doing a genetic test is that you can find what you're susceptible to. So, for example, if you have a genetic predisposition for heart disease or cancer or dementia or inability to detoxify, you know that by getting your gene test and you can take measures to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, that's what phenotype is, is the interaction of your genes with the environmental exposures, okay? So if I found someone who was very susceptible to heart disease, I said, you better be exercising fairly regularly and you better be eating the right things and decreasing the stress in your life and making sure your blood's right and so forth so that you don't manifest that heart disease, okay? I highly recommend everybody get the genotype. You only have to do it once in your life and it tells you exactly what to do and what not to do um, as you go through life, if you want to be healthy. Um, the, the next to last underlying cause is structural issues, okay? Now, structural issues are you've got a scoliosis in the spine, you're, you've got collapsing arches, you, those kind of things. One of the things that throws off structure in life are scars, okay? And so to be able to resolve that scar because everything pulls into the scar and it throws off your structure. Um, people who have midline scars, whether it's open heart surgery, whether it's cesarean section, those kind of things, those are major issues because they cut across an acupuncture meridian right down the middle of the body. The, other, the two areas that control our structure are the bottom of the feet, okay, and the base of the skull where the skull meets the first vertebra. Those are the two things that control so much. And as a dentist, I also do a lot of structural balancing. We can resolve scoliosis, most of them, about 90% of them, right from the mouth, believe it or not, by balancing this out. I won't go into that too much, but it's, it, it, that shows you by treating something at a distance, you can treat much of the body, okay? Um, and finally, this is something that very few people understand, is the electrical disturbances. Okay, now, if you didn't know, we are not only physical beings, but we're also energy beings, okay? <laughs> and this is what acupuncturists deal with. They, they uh, determine what's the flow of energy, or they call it chi, C-H-I. And if that energy is blocked where you have an infection or where you have a, say, a serotonin deficiency, that's what Chinese medicine picks up. Well, we do have that energy flow, one second, one second, we do have that energy flow, and so much of what we're exposed to now in this environment, our cell phones, our cell phone towers, our microwaves, all this kind of stuff, everything emitting, the, the Wi-Fi's and so forth, interfere with the electrical flow in the body, and that can have great implications to overall health. Yes, you had a question. Yeah, I have a very high energy level, and the doctor comes to me, I have such a high energy level, I have a hard time relaxing. I'm always saying, relax, relax. I'm a doctor come near me, and he sort of touched my shoulder, help put me please. Relax, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be careful, I'm gonna be careful. I, I couldn't get me to relax. So I must be so electric, so energetic, that I'm too energetic for my own good. I have too much chief for my own good. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Actually, there's two types of energy. Energy is get up and go, get up and go, okay? Yeah, you can jump right. around and, and so forth. Versus the flow of energy, like the electrical flow in the body. So there's two different types of energy. They interact, but there's two dot different types of energy. What I think you're talking about is um, the nervous system, there, there's a part of it called sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic should be dominant during the night when you're trying to rest and recover and recuperate. And sympathetic is more active during the day. If you're sympathetic dominant for whatever reason, and we can, we can find that out, then it makes it hard for you to fall asleep at night and you're always, you know, you're always in stress and tension. Your body has to learn to be able to 
at night, rest and recover, okay? And these people say, well, look, I only need four hours sleep at night or whatever. No, that's wrong, okay? Maybe you can do it, but it's not healthy, okay? You need that seven, eight hours to be able to recover. Um, so that's very important on an energetic disturbance. That's good. That's good. Okay, the, the, we, the, there's many reasons why you can be exhausted at night, okay? Sometimes it might be individual, but sometimes it may be a chronic condition. Now, I have to tell you this, and, and, and we're getting into some areas that are a little bit more complicated. What's the thing that charges us up, that allows us to deal with stress and so forth? What are the things, what, what's, what's the gland in the body that helps us do that? No, not the pituitary, the adrenal gland. Adrenal gland. Okay. Yes, and so if you're constantly secreting adrenaline, it yeah. wears out the body, it exhausts, I mean, it make, make you hyper, yes. but it really is a problem because your adrenals will get exhausted. No, okay. Not, and, not, not much of it okay. Well, may, we, we need to evaluate that sometime. Not, not, uh, not <laughs> <laughs> so... We're getting into some very, these are a little bit more involved topics, but th very important to understand that is make sure you can fall asleep at night and get good, deep, restful sleep, and um, that during the day you, you have energy to go. Yeah, I exercise. Very sick good, good. So um, just a, a quick thing on sleep. A lot of people have sleep issues, okay? Here's a general rule of thumb. If you can't fall asleep at night, okay, it's because more adrenaline issues, okay? You can't rest or you're looking at a computer and you uh, have the blue light. Does everyone know that the computers and the TV and the cell phones and so forth emit blue light? And that blue light stimulates the brain, okay? And it pollutes the brain. So I always tell people, here's another take home, Go on, on the computer, I got mine from Amazon, and I order blue light filter glasses. So as I'm about an hour before I go to bed or so, if I'm watching TV or on the computer, I put these on and it filters out the blue light. And it allows me to sleep much better. If you can't stay asleep, you wake up two or three times in the middle of the night, what that means is that you have generally have blood sugar issues, okay? Meaning your blood sugar falls too low and the brain wakes you up to say, stimulate more blood sugar uh, to get to the brain so it's, it's not unhealthy. So that's important to understand that distinction. Can't fall asleep or can't stay asleep, okay? It gives me an indication of certain things. One way, if, if any of you can't stay asleep at night, here's a nice little tidbit. Take a protein powder drink before you go to bed, and that'll take you all the way through the night, okay? So one thing we're going to get into a little bit later is uh, becoming a fat metabolizer as opposed to a sugar carbohydrate metabolizer. Okay, any questions on that, the underlying issues? Remember, it's important to find the underlying issues versus just treating a symptom, okay? And... Um, one other thing I should say on this is that two people with the same disease label, like, like two diabetics or two people with two women with breast cancer or two people with dementia, they can come from completely different directions, okay? Two diabetics may come from maybe an emotional issue, a nutrient issue, a hormone, so, and the other person can have completely different underlying causes. So to treat everybody the same with the same label disease is inappropriate, okay? It's important to understand what the underlying issues are so you eliminate them and you give the body the tools to heal. Because as I said before, the, most, the, 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 only, um, the only healer is your own body, okay? You need to eliminate the problems and provide it with the tools that it needs to, whether it's nutrient tools or supplements or therapy or whatever, okay? <clears throat> so here's how 
Here's how disease starts to manifest. This is very important to understand that, okay? Um, first of all, when you're exposed to something, let's say the flu virus, okay? The first thing that happens in the disease manifestation is an energetic change, a physics change, okay? And most of the time, the body will take care of that. We have systems to be able to handle that, our immune system, our circulatory system, our nervous system, but the first change that happens is a physics change. That's represented by that formula up there, which my good buddy Albert Einstein developed. But um, anyways, physics changes are the first change that happens in disease. If the body doesn't take care of it, it becomes a chemistry change, okay? Now the biochemistry starts changing, and if the body doesn't resolve it at that point, then it becomes a biology change, like a breast lump, like a diagnosis of diabetes, like dementia, or that kind of stuff, okay? So wouldn't it make a lot of sense to pick things up at the physics or chemistry change, which we do? In traditional medicine, most of the time, the disease or illness or problem is picked up at a biology change when it's much harder to take care of. You've got to take out your gallbladder or you have to have a, a lump removed or you have to go on certain drugs for the rest of your life. So it makes a lot of sense to pick things up at a, um, at a physics or chemistry change rather than wait till it becomes a biology change. Okay? That's a very important concept is early um, early detection and treatment of things. What do you think that does to healthcare costs if you pick things up at a early stage? Dramatically reduces them. Wouldn't it be nice to make a little lifestyle change or a little nutrient change rather than wait until several years later when you need to have a surgery? Okay. So how does the body heal? <clears throat> The way the body heals is to eliminate, un, eliminate the underlying cause of the illness and let the body heal itself, as we've been talking about. Um, drugs rarely heal and should not be the first line of treatment <coughs> when there are alternatives to it, okay? Um, it's, we're all of the mindset to, well, I've got an ache or a pain or I do this, let me go either get something over the counter, some drug over the counter, or go to my doctor, or go to, go to the emergency room. Actually, I don't know if you know this, is that a lot of people, they, their doctor is the emergency room. And uh, going to the emergency room is the minerals have been released and uh, accumulate in the blood vessels, and they become very brittle. Now, what's one of the big concerns of, of people as they get older, especially women, with respect to the bones? osteoporosis. That's because minerals have been leached out of the bones because minerals neutralize acidity in the body. The body wants you to neutralize that acidity so it finds the minerals to neutralize acidity and the biggest place you get them are the bones and next the teeth. Okay and so that gets to be a problem on many respects long term. Okay so the way to treat that, and I interviewed the woman who actually, did, who actually did the research and wrote a book on this, is that in addition to taking vitamin D and calcium and magnesium for the bones, is make sure you're taking vitamin K2, okay? K2 takes the minerals out of the blood vessels and puts them back into the bones. Okay, 